Hey everyone, I am Manic Land is eaten. I've just realised I left my e-cig downstairs, so I'm going to have to go without that for the next hour. So I don't usually do just chatting streams, but um, I do stream on Friday nights, which is supposed to be scary games. And it's like I've had people recommend various scary games to me. Even some of the games that I've already played have been recommended multiple times. But last night I played Outlast, which uh, loads of people had assured me that yeah, this was like one of the scariest games ever. And if you go, if you were to Google like you know, scariest games, it's one of the games that comes up there. And it's like I'm looking at these scariest games on on Google, and I'm looking and going, these aren't scary. You know, the I'm not, I'm not feeling it with with these games. And I want real fear in a game. I want real atmosphere and suspense and everything that makes a good horror. Yeah, and it's like, there's, looking at like what is being used in horror games, I'm looking at it going like, most of them are what I would consider horror theme. Yeah, you know, they're relying on um, shock, if anything. Like, yeah, you know, it's all jump scares and grotesque imagery. Imagery. It's, it's like there's no fear there. It's just disgust and shock. And it's like with any jump scare, you 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 pull off any jump scare. And it's like, yeah, it makes you jump. Hey, uh, hey, sloth, how you doing? But yeah, you you pull off any jump scare, and it get it will get you. You you could be playing Super Mario Brothers, and suddenly out of nowhere, have like Mario appear on the screen, like, Bleh! and you know, just go, it's a me, a Mario, and uh, you you jump out of your skin because it's unexpected. That shock, and so many horror games rely on this aspect I, I mean not just horror games horror movies as well like you know just nothing much going on and just suddenly you know and it it'll make you it'll make you jump if they can't do that they rely on disgust and it's like i, I got a bunch of images up to like kind of show how disgust works uh, more times they get you, but jump scares are lame. Exactly. Exactly. Now, jump scares aren't always lame if they're used right. But it's just like, that's... They use too much. Horror horror games, horror movies, either way. Like, if I go over to the screen here, like, this... What, what emotion does that bring in? It's just gory. It's just bits of corpse and stuff with, you know, it's... But that brings disgust uh, and it's like, I don't know whether it's going to show these images in the uh, order that I bought them up and where the hell's the next thing on this no uh, the thing for windows to be able to look at images is crap but yeah another another gore one yeah again I mean these are just like Halloween props but again the whole idea that that's not scary it's gross. It's yeah. It's disgust. It's like ew, dead things. Um, and then it's like they'll you'll have them do it with characters in movies. Like that's not scary. It's gross. Yeah, it's disgusting. It, it induces it induces disgust. You you're repulsed by that image. Um. Same as this here, like this is just a, a sculpture made of clay. But again, that there, it's grotesque. Yeah, it's not scary. It's just ill. Um, and of course, this carries on into like video games where, you know, bring in a really famous one there that everyone will recognize if they've played the resident evil games again 
that's not so much scary as grotesque. And this also, th this particular character from Resident Evil, um, is it Nemesis, I think it's called? Uh, the thing there is a, a trope that I'm seeing in a lot, hell of a lot, of video games. The teeth. It just seems to be a thing of teeth. Not necessarily sharp teeth, but just like enlarged teeth. And, you know, with what I played last night, Outlast, again, you see the same thing there. Teeth. You know, and you, you end up with, with basically what appears in so many video games. Uh, where's it gone? I had it there. Which is basically some guy with a big knife. You know, some guy who can either rip you in half or with a big knife chasing you around. And again, that's not fear. It's, it's not really fear there. It's, it's too much action. It's the... Well, Huggy Wuggy worked. But that was the way Huggy Wuggy was used worked. But, like... The thing with a, a lot of horror games and, and such is that you've basically got this guy that can go around and kill you and kill you quite easily. And like, you know, every time you press continue, we'll can, you know, we'll kill you again. Yeah, I think this one is actually, by the look of it, is taken by, um, is it Dead by Daylight? Uh, which, yeah, Dead by Daylight is, is a, a horror game. It's not a horror game, it's horror themed. It's themed around horror characters, but it's not a horror game. It's a game of it, or as we as, as we used to call it in the playground, it's a game of it. And that's how I very much feel about uh, a lot of the a lot of these horror games is that they're using only two aspects of horror to try and bring about a horror game. You know, it's it's basically it's still an action game it's just an action game with horror theme yeah um and like one of the things that pyramid head does though uh this is going to come on come onto another thing which kind of comes under the disgust still under the disgust side of it is the fact that you can't see pyramid head's face and this is something as well that's used quite a bit in horror uh which sometimes works you know, but it's like we like to see we have a connection to faces and if you distort that face in any way or even obscure the face it will invoke like a sense of fear or sense of, some, of something alien about that person you can't get a sense of familiarity which like pyramid head induces that sort of fear because there is no face to look at you, know, you can't see emotion. Everything there's hidden. And you get this same thing as well with Samura Morgan from The Ring. You know, behind that, there's a face, but it's obscured by Samura's hair. Yeah, Bendy and the Ink Machine, you don't see the monster's face in that. It's hidden. And we have this fear of what we don't know. You know, so... This is actually, you know, this sort of thing starts to go into it. Now, The Ring, I, I really enjoyed. I liked The Ring. It made me feel uneasy. It, it was a good horror film. Um, and then if we look at another character from, uh, from you know, internet folklore, uh, again, with Slenderman, we have, again, Slenderman is a grotesque. The limbs are all out of proportion. And then, again... The face is essentially obscured. You can't see a face. Yeah, the limbs are too long. The he's too tall, and he has no face. So that makes us feel uneasy. You know, shadows, anything where we can't see there. But then, like I said, this all goes into the category of disgust. So there's only two aspects that I can see a lot of horror games are actually using, which is disgust and shock. You know, it's missing the key element to anything horror, which is fear. 
And not all horror games. Yeah, I've played quite a few horror games that really do work with inducing that fear. And some of it can be done through music, but sound is a really, really big thing with that. Now, on Halloween, I played uh, a game called SCP-087, and that worked. Very, very, very simple game where you are just literally just walking down a flight of stairs. But it made you feel uneasy. It set the mood where a jump scare isn't just a blur on the screen, but is a actually gets you. It actually gets to somewhere deep. It does more than just trigger fight or flight. You're already feeling uneasy. You're already getting that stronger, deeper fight or flight building up. Then you get the jump scare and he wants you to nope the fuck out of there. That's what a horror game should do. Now, when I was playing Outlast last night, it set the mood really, really well at the beginning. But it set the mood for a completely different game, for a different experience. It set the mood for something which would slowly build up. Uh, instead, you get that mood, you know, everything was perfect, you know, the soundtrack was just right, the ambient sounds were just right, the walls howling, the moon, everything about that setting was perfect. And then you get in the building, there's just fucking gore everywhere and like, you know, coppers impaled on spikes. That was it. Emotion, you know, immersion broken for me. And that is, immersion is the most important thing. Simulacra got, uh, got in my head. Don't know if it's like, yeah, Simulacra is a horror game. But Simulacra, again, it, it slowly builds it. It's, it's a mis it uses mystery to invoke fear. Um, but that's the thing, if you've got too much mystery where you're there going, the fuck is going on? You end up in this whole situation of your immersion's broken again. Yeah, so, again, the, the, the horror game doesn't work. Yeah, immersion is the most important thing. The most, most important thing. If your immersion's broken, then, obviously, you know, the game isn't going to work. And with, you know, this happened with uh, Outlast. Now, the annoying thing is, is I was actually, as a game, just as a game, I was enjoying um, Outlast. And I am going to continue to play it. Not on my Friday Night Horror stream, because I don't think it deserves a place there. Uh, but I'm just going to play that in my own time just to finish the game. I don't know, I might do unscheduled streams of it just so... Uh, that people can see the rest of the game but it doesn't deserve a place in my horror category it's not worthy of it and and i've had a few people going oh what do you what do you mean it's not worthy it's scary as hell it's no it's not it's shocking it's grotesque but it doesn't make me feel fear it does yeah you know, there's other games that have Layers of Fear, that did it. That had me feeling uneasy. Um, oh, what was it called? Uh, Mists of Aden. That worked. That's in my. That's on my list of horror games. Summer of 58. Now, all of these had jump scares as well, but they had jump scares in the right places. They built to those jump scares. They had things going on around you. Dread Halls as well. Now, Dread Halls does fall into a bit of the cliche with with various video games but the one of the things that dread halls dirt uses is claustrophobia it uses those type things and it yeah you have the whole thing of like the lamp and the lamp oil running out um but it doesn't have you run running around going the fuck is going on like what um oh uh, Outlast and Amnesia the Dark Descent did. Those two had you running around going, the fuck am I doing? While at the same time your oil is running out or your battery is running out. And the constantly for your head is not the anxiety of like, oh shit, the monster's going to get me if it's all dark. Ooh, I'm scared. No. Instead, what it is, is 
if I if, if this battery runs out, the game becomes unplayable because everywhere that's dark is pitch black and I can't see a fucking thing. If my battery runs out, the game is unplayable. And that's the problem I had with those two games with that. I mean, there's many other issues I have with. Hey, Children of Chaos, how are you? But yeah, Dread Halls. One, Dread Halls uses claustrophobia and the fact that it's a VR game. So when you've got, I mean, when you've got things coming towards you on there, it feels like it's actually coming towards you. So Dread Halls was Dread Halls is on my list of good horror games. It worked. Then what was that? Oh, there was that other one. Stay, sir. I, I can't remember where you had the. Um, you were playing a uh, private investigator, and there's that bit where you're driving along in the car, and you look over, and suddenly there's something sat in the seat. Yeah, and again, unexpected. But again, that goes under the category of shock rather than fear, because it's shocking you. Whereas Dread Halls induced fear. It induced fear through things such as claustrophobia, uh, ambient lighting, um, ambient sound, and it worked with that. It worked really, really well. Now, at the moment, I'm just playing a whole bunch of... Uh, Royalty free things off of um I forget what it's called now. Uh I've actually managed to stop it posting on my thing by banning one of the words that it uses in every uh automated message that comes up. Oh, what are you called? Pretzel, that's it. So I don't want to get DMCA'd, so but I want something other than just my voice in the background because I'm doing just chatting and I'm not used to doing just chatting. So, yeah, uh, Children of Chaos, um, we're talking horror games and everything that's wrong with just about every horror game that ever came out since Resident Evil. Cthulhu was good, but Cthulhu as well, it's already got all the lore and mythos there. All you need to do is build the atmosphere for the Cthulhu games. Yeah, but again, it's like, it's too easy to go down the, um, it's too easy to go down the, the, action game route even with cthulhu games you can too easily try to tell the story in the form of an action game and it's like no you're telling a horror story in an action game it's not a, yeah it, it then ceases to become a horror game if it's too much action it seems like if there's puzzles in the game anything that breaks that immersion so if you're failing to progress through the game because of combat then your immersion's broken. The moment you have to press a continue button, or you know, your immersion's broken. Uh, oh no, I'm perfect. No, it's, I've I've got I've I've looked for uh, on Pretzel. I've I specifically looked for horror music. I want my music to be in theme. But I mean, it's like even just listening to this uh, this bit of horror music that's playing here. It's atmospheric. Yeah, it's... You, you listen to a piece of horror music and you can see how it differs from any other soundtrack from any movie or whatever. It's got certain suspense building sounds to it. Uh, I was playing one that had uh, was escape game come horror. Lots of jump scares and gore and running around. Think, what the fuck? Yeah, if you're running around a lot, like, again going back to Outlast and the same issue as well with um, Amnesia. The You cannot get through this door until you flip three switches that are located at three different positions around the building, while at the same time trying to avoid said deformed human with big knife. Yeah, in which case, I'm going to actually just refer to them as grotesques, because that's what they are. They were grotesque. They're designed to make you go, Ugh. it's a grotesque, you know. And you know, the more human looking a grotesque, the more you can be disgusted by it. If it looks too different to a human, you it's too easy to not be disgusted by it. Uh, disgusted by it. But again, that's where games seem to be going. It's like they... they it's, it's almost like you, you could change the gore and grotesques for other things 
and the game would still feel the same because the only thing that makes it a horror is the grotesques and the jump scares you know shock and disgust it's not playing on the fear now uh what's it called alien isolation that that did work except the game was too long the game dragged on and at the point it dragged on the immersion was broken because all you're thinking is oh for fuck's sake please give me the ending of the game because it dragged on too long the immersion was broken you no longer had the fear lurk in the dark episodal to make it worse well actually saying about the episodal games episodal works um it's like I had, you know, what's it called? Poppy Playtime. Uh, I didn't expect it be, uh, you know, to come in episodes, but um, it works. Now, you've only got one chase with Huggy, uh, but that was done well. It wasn't like, you know, you're trying to get from point A to point B, avoiding Huggy. Huggy just chases you. And as long as you stay on course right, you will get away from him. And that's that's a chase done correctly. You know, you always want to be able to get away. And I don't mean like just, you know, that you have to jump over the... Well, you, I don't mean like it's a close call or that, you know, the guy runs into the room and goes, oh, I know you're in one of these cupboards and eventually fucking opens the cupboard you're in. You know, outlast. But it's like an example of this, right? Looking at... Freddy and Jason. Now, J Jason is the grotesque with the big knife. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, Freddy Krueger is a grotesque with a whole bunch of knives on one hand, but Freddy's a completely different thing to Jason. Jason is a grotesque human with a big knife. Yeah, he's a big guy who could probably rip your body in half, sort of grotesque. Yeah, he's with with Jason, you're disgusted by what Jason is. Yeah, um, the fear comes out of the fact that Jason, if he catches you, could very easily overpower you. Whereas, you know, so with, within all you got to do is run out the door and run away, and you, you know, problem solved with Jason. Why you ever go back in the house is is beyond me. Just run, go get the authorities. You got like some maniac with a big knife. Now, Freddy Krueger is a completely different thing. Freddy Krueger is capable of actually inducing fear because, and it's even pointed out in the, the Freddy Krueger remake with it, um, that you can't escape him. It's, you know, if you manage to run out of the room that he's in and run, a, run down the corridor and hide in a cupboard, it's because Freddy wanted you to. Freddy wants you. He knows you're in that cupboard. You know, if you... If you manage to... No matter where you escape to, Freddy knows exactly where you are. He doesn't have to come looking for you. You know, he's chasing you because to him it's a game. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you're doing because he's already got you. When you hide in that cupboard, you're not hiding in a cupboard. You're hiding in Freddy. Freddy is everything around you. He's omnipresent in that environment. You cannot escape Freddy Krueger. If you wake up, it is because Freddy Krueger wanted you to wake up. And like I said in the remake, it actually makes a point of that. Where yeah, he says, it's like, my intention was to keep scaring you so you didn't want to sleep. So that you, in the end, you'd become so tired that you couldn't wake up. That's how Freddy Krueger works. You know, you escape Freddy Krueger through his design. And that's, one of, that's what makes Freddy Krueger so much scarier than Jason. Jason, you can beat off. Jason, you can club across the head and run. Get in a car and drive away. Freddy Krueger... Well, at the end of one of the Nightmare on Elm Streets, they all get in the car to drive away and the, the thing closes over the top and it's Freddy Krueger's jumper. And then he comes in. It's the first Nightmare on Elm Street, actually. Yeah, and then he 
comes through the door and pulls his mother in through the tiny window. They should have cut that seat, that that bit out. That looked crap. But this is where it ends up becoming a parody of themselves. Yeah, you know, I love horror when they're done right. I love the Conjuring films. I really like Insidious, and I like um, was it? Yeah, it's Insidious and Sinister. Like it's Sinister really made me feel uneasy. And it's like it's not the fact that it's children doing these murders that made me feel uneasy, or the way that the murders were done. That's the shock and disgust side of horror. But Sinister had this this audio that went with it. You know, you've got the grotesque, the, the actual demon itself in Sinister is a grotesque. It looks almost human, but with dis a distorted face. You know, you've got the shock value of it's, it's the kids that are doing these murders. But then you've got the atmosphere and the ambience that's produced by the soundtrack and just it just builds and builds and builds. You know, it doesn't rely on jump scares or anything. In fact, I don't even think it even has a jump scare. It just has like, you know, you might just see an image in the corner there. It's not there as a jump scare, it's just there. If you notice it, it might cause you to jump. But it's subtle. Um, so I don't even think it really there's even any jump scares in Sinister. It's mostly down on the disgust side. Um, but it induces fear through the weird sounds that are going off in the background. And it's like, it's the same thing as what, like I said, SCP-087 did. As you're going down these stairs and you've got this weird, these weird alien sounds which really make you feel uneasy it makes you apprehensive about continuing down and that really really worked and yeah i want to see more of that sort of thing in games like uh, i'm trying to remember state have you played phasmophobia with me yet i can't remember if you have i know Children Chaos, I know you have. I know you've played Phasmophobia. But Phasmophobia hits... Well, I'm trying to think. I don't think it has the disgust side of it. Yeah, maybe if you actually manage to catch a glimpse of the ghost, it might induce a bit of disgust because of the design of some of the ghosts. But that... It doesn't even rely on shock on phasmophobia yet it has it, it has jump scares in it I suppose but I can't even really say they're jump scares really um, but it really does do the fear and that's what I liked with phasmophobia is it it played on the very thing that I want in horror now I'm an atheist I don't believe in spirits and ghosts and things like that but phasmophobia makes you believe it and that's because although it is using stock assets even though like when it first came out it was janky as fuck when it first came out hey shoot the duke how are you doing yeah, even though Phasmophobia was janky as fuck when it first came out, that immediately made it to that hit the top spot in my in my list of horror games. It's still there. Although I've become desensitized to it, I will always remember that first experience with it and the fact that I nope I noped out of the game. The first time I played it, I was like, well fuck me. <laughs> yeah, I I yeah, I I actually quit the game for a minute and go I need a I need a breather I need a breather after that that really fucking got me exactly and you know again one of the things that a lot of um you know horror games do is they introduce such a fucking weird plot of like and it's usually some weird cult or stupid over the top like science experiment where no one's set batted an eyelid at it yeah, and it's kind of relies on that, and it's but it it drip feeds you this this little bit of like 
information where each bit of information it tells you nothing you know where, where it's like it's just constant trying to do intrigue but to me failing at it again this is what outlast did it's like oh come and see me at this location i'll tell you more Ah, oh, you you have no idea oh you you're gonna wake up to it and come to this location then i'll tell you more and then you go to that location it's, oh you haven't discovered it yet but you'll soon know You'll soon know, and I'm going to see you at this other location. And that's basically, to me, the essentially the plot to Outlast is, you know, meet me at this location, and I'll tell you to meet me at the next location. Oh, by the way, you got to hit three switches so you can get through this fucking door. <laughs> over and over and over. Oh, and there's this big, you know, grotesque with a knife hanging around, so watch out for him. It's not fucking scary. It's just the same shit over and over again. It, you know, it just didn't induce that fear. Uh, well, if you want to have a go with Faz in a bit, Stace, I'm up for a game of Phasmophobia like later on in the stream if you want. Same with you, uh, uh, same with you, Children of Chaos. You're welcome to join in a game of Phasmophobia later. Like I said, I'm not used to just chatting streams. It's just that I felt this absolute need to just rant about how fed up I'm getting with the same shit in horror games it's basically resident evil clone yeah you know, now at the time i remember when resident evil came out oh, i thought it was a good game but too much on the action side for a horror now silent hill that was a different thing still relied a bit on the action but nowhere near as much as resident evil and one of the things that worked for me with um, so the original Silent Hill was the camera angles. The camera angles made you feel uneasy. The way that the cameras turned made you feel uneasy. The chase scenes in it made you feel uneasy. And that, that's, that's the thing that I think like Outlast could have been fucking amazing if they'd have done it right slowly build up don't have you immediately walking in there and everyone's fucking dead and blood and guts everywhere while like three grotesques sat down watching a, watching the tv with a blood splatter on it you know i laughed at that i i really laughed at that whole that scene where I'm, i in fact i'm pretty sure if you were to go back and watch that stream from last night you'd probably laugh as well because i was like hey what's up guys yeah what are you watching uh yeah i think i've seen this one it's a bit dull uh, you know I can't remember exactly what I said, but it was along those lines. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen this one—the ending shit sort of thing. And then it's like I go off, do this other bit, and then I have to come back through this through this room. He's like, "Oh, it's not finished yet." Yo, uh, what's happened so far? What what point of the movie are you at? Right? Okay. Well, I'll catch you guys later. Yeah, and then carry on out the room because I start mocking it, and that's because my immersion was already broken. Um, I don't think I played Jump Sword Man. I'll have to have a little look at that. But yeah, um, and I said the whole point of, point of me doing this stream is like, what, what does everyone else think makes a good horror game? Like, what do you want? What do you look for in a horror game? You know, what to you, like, makes you want to press the off button on that console or on the computer? What makes you want to shut that game down? What makes you want to nope out of it? You know, are there any games that you've played that, Make it so you can't go to sleep at night. Because that's what I'm looking for. And like I said, not jump scares, not grotesque. I want fear. I want real... I want... I want what the original version of The Haunting accomplished. Using only sound. I want what SCP-081 did. Or is it 081087? I can't remember now. But when... All that is, is walking down a fucking staircase. But that, that got the, um, what's he called? Uh, that got the adrenaline going. Well, it's the thing, it's, it got the, the, you know, the fear hormones going. Uh, if I need to, t yeah, it's, well, I mean, this is the other thing with some games. It's like, but they rely on the, on darkness. And it's like, if I was to turn all the lights off in here, it's like, it doesn't make this any scarier. It just makes it so you can't fucking see. 
which again comes back to the whole mystery thing of like you know hiding stuff make can make things scary you don't know what's on the other side of the curtain you know so you don't want to pull back the curtain to see what's on the other side it's like hiding under the bed sheets bed sheets ain't gonna fucking help you but you still don't want to pull them down in case you see what's there you know that's fear that's what i'm looking for i want that i don't want to walk around the corner i want that i don't want to stay in this house which is what i still get from i still get that from phasmophobia and it's not a, if i die in this house i'm not going to have the fucking credits to get a new torch it's like uh and it's something to be honest i, re I do wish that the developers of phasmophobia would do the, the whole thing where you get the the hands that do that uh to me it's a little bit slow yeah something like yeah occasionally like a face just goes like that and then you're dead I would like that. You know, a bit of variation to how the death scene goes. Um, that I would I would like a bit of uh, in Phasma. Some variation on the death scenes. Just to mix it up a bit. Uh, the stuff that you get in your head. Those creaks, odd shadows. Exactly. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's what Mortuary Assistant managed to do. Now, of course, Mortuary Assistant had a few jump scares of books flying across the room and stuff. But there was like one bit where you've got like a, a cupboard where you just like it doesn't come out and jump at you. In fact, the actual jump scare isn't it appearing, it's it disappearing. Uh, in fact, I can if you bear with me. I'll go to Chrissy Cream's channel because I, when she played it, I, I got a clip of it. Um, so bear with me while I just find Chrissy Cream's thing. Back to Twitch. Because, uh, actually, no, I can get... Because I took the clip, didn't I? I can do it from my channel. Uh, video producer, is that right? Clips. Clips I've created. That, using Chrissy Creams, I can show you an example of jump scares as well. So, let me... Hide, hide. Pause that while I... Where the hell's that gone? Right, let me pause Pretzel a second. And then I will flip over to my left screen. And then full screen Chrissy Creams here. Now, Chrissy had put up like some sound bites on her channel. Uh, one of them was a screen. And now she's just introducing her... <laughs> she's introducing her stream here where she was going to be playing a whole bunch of um, horror games from Itch.io. And, uh, yeah, I thought this I thought this was funny. Right, but... type of thing. So I'm going to be having a look over here. So I have, I have a first game for tonight. It's called S... <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> so, yeah. As you can see, a jump scare does not make a horror game. A jump scare is just a jump scare. They can be used in horror games, but a jump scare is just a jump scare. Uh, anyway, where is it? Uh, trying to find the one where she was playing. Um, mortuary, yeah, here it is, where she was playing Mortuary Assistant. And... Uh, I think it was this clip. It's getting, it's there. Yeah, this is oh, the one. Well, let me full screen that. So on this on this clip here, uh, you can see there, she, there's, you've had this black thing that's appeared here, which uh, it hasn't. Yeah, it, it's it's appeared there, but it's far enough away that it hasn't induced the jump scare. Uh, it's just there. It makes you feel uneasy because you've got this shadowy figure there. It's getting. Now, watch this cupboard here. It's there. Oh, turn on. Peekaboo. It's gone. Thank God for that. Uh, I don't, hang on. Go on, turn around. Because you'll see it in a minute. Now, like I said, this thing doesn't just suddenly appear there. Yeah, it's, it's not like, you know, she turns it and it appears there. It's already there when she goes to look at it. 
Right, see it there? Right, now she doesn't notice it straight away, but it's there. Now, the bit that makes her jump is not the creature appearing, it's the creature disappearing. Fucking bitch. So, and again, that wasn't anything coming towards the screen, but it's the fact that it was already there. She only noticed it when it disappeared. Now, if that creature had stayed there and didn't move, how long would it have taken Chrissy to notice that it was there? So Mortuary Assistant really worked with building up the atmosphere and everything. And when it did bring in the scares, the scares were done right. It wasn't just some random blur for the sake of it. Um, yeah, the, and the, like I said, this is one of the things that I think a lot of games at the moment are doing wrong. It's too much of this recipe from the original Resident Evil. And the thing that makes it worse is they're introducing elements that make it so you lose your immersion. You know, like uh, Outlast, right off the bat, right at the beginning of the game, my immersion was broken. Really, really good leading up to that building. In fact, I, I could... Let me bring up my stream from yesterday, actually. Um, uh, with the, the content, video producer. So if I, if I bring up my stream from last night and... I can show you at what point I my immersion started to be broken. Uh, so I introduced the game. God, oh, what is the name of that film? This game action. Right. It's not just dif not difficult. Hard. Hey. Oh, let me. Yeah. So this bit of the game worked. The music was was good the look of it was good the atmosphere here was good it looked like it was going to be a good game well i like the soundtrack i even comment on it there that it's got that build up it reminded me of shutter it's island it's got that like woman in black sort of feel to the to the music there. i like that and um oh what the hell is the one I can't figure the, the actor's name now. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio one, where he goes on an island where it's... Um, yeah, it's Shutter, like, uh, Shutter Island. Well, I know but, I'm going to need to look that up. Right, but even then, walking up to the... Um, no one in the gatehouse to talk to me. All right. Yeah, quickly. So I think I yeah because I was also as well trying to figure out the get the controls right the... here. Now when I when I stream this I I I actually had the gamma settings a lot lower on my screen to what I was showing everyone else because I wanted everyone else to be able to see and not be in as much blackness as me. Shit, I'm um, on the stream as well. But yeah, so the look of it and it's like you can hear the wolves howling in the background. Said about the doors, the, the lightning. The, the clouds, the mountains there, the look of the building itself, it looked it is a perfect. The the walls howling, the birds through, actually. To run, hold down left. The shift. atmosphere there was perfect. Right. I'm just gonna and run then, around here just not to even see if I how much just um, get to where I actually get into the building. Okay. And it's like is it this bit? There, like straight away, I'm not even like you know. Bear in mind, as as streaming, it's like you know, there's going to be a few moments where I'm not actually doing anything because I'm talking to the people I'm streaming to. But right there, 28 minutes into my stream, bodies all over the fucking floor, and a copper on a impaled on a spike. 28 minutes into it, so you got this really cool build up where it feels like it's going to have that actual decent flow to to uh, to be an actual decent horror game and then for the rest of that was it that my immersion was broken at that point because you've just come into this building you've just broke come and climbed in for a window to see this shit yo know, 
Now the fact that he's still alive tells you this has only just happened. Yeah, why? That's the why when you've seen all this, like, for you continue three, into the building. Fresh meat or something like that. Yeah, you get pushed off a balcony, like there's someone like shouting fresh meat. You, why are you not trying to leave the building? Why are you still trying to investigate it? My immersion was broken then. Because why are you still going in? In reality, you'd be you'd be gone from the place. You see all those bodies everywhere. Not not out of fear. It wouldn't be out of fear or anything. It would be out of I need to get the fucking police here. There's somewhat there's something really bad happening here. This need this needs like a whole squad of police to investigate this. Not little old me fucking newspaper reporter. Um so my immersion was broken then. And and it's like, yeah, I'm not actually far away from the whole bit with the TV lounge. Um progress any further without a key card. Yeah, I, there and you go. You can hear on every bloody surface, which is reminding me very much that I'm playing a video game. Takes away from the fear. You can hear me there. I'm not even. I'm. I'm. I'm 47 minutes, or not even 47 minutes into the game, and I'm already saying my immersion's being broken here because I'm having to fucking search around for a stupid key card. Because this is exactly what is wrong with a lot of modern horror games. Is is these treasure hunts and these any puzzles? Moment, and I've, I've said this repeatedly to other people as well. Any moment you have a I don't know what the fuck I'm doing moment in a horror game, it ceases again to be a horror. So I'm no longer scared. I'm now getting frustrated because I can't find a fucking key card to a room which I could probably bust open without the other shit that's around here. Oh, and the thing that makes it worse with that fucking door is that like you've got to find a key card to open that door. But you get into that room nice and secure, you close the door behind you, and then someone breaks the fucking door down to get to you. You can't bust that door open, but the other guy can. You know, so again, more immersion broken, because by that, the door could have been kicked in. It's just that you didn't allow me to kick that in because you wanted me to go off and find a fucking key card to open the door because you want to drag the game out. Yeah, TV moment is just after this, I think, oh. if I remember right. Oh, I've gone to the... But again, again, like, what you're coming across there is deformed humans. Yeah, it's... Uh, that Actually, that was the TV moment there. I don't just reload the batteries a minute. So TV moment. Hey chaps, what's on TV? Seems like an interesting TV show you're watching there. Kick back, yeah, have a few beers, watch the white noise. Damn it, I should have said that. I? I've seen this one, this is white noise. Yeah. That's actually not a bad film. Don't that mind one. me. I'm just a I'm just a reporter. And then it's like I come back come back through the room in a second. Yeah, it's just before that bit. So it's like, yeah, Collect I end up. Objects are updated and you report I wish I could just like, cool. e you know, easily jump to certain points there. But I go back through the room again after I find it, because this is the other thing: it's all the mm. amount of locked doors everywhere, which again breaks immersion. Because it's like, why the fuck is there like escaped patients all over the place, but all the fucking doors are locked? So what's happened? What I miss?
So I keep thinking he's there, like, chuffing on a cigarette or something. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm into this TV show myself. And here comes the jump scare. Yeah, I can see... Whoa! Fuck! See? Like I said, my immersion was broken, but I still got a jump scare. And that's because jump scares don't require immersion. You know, jump scares can work in all sorts of ways. You know, it really doesn't take much to do a jump scare. Like, <laughs> my face can be enough for that. Um, in fact, that wasn't quick enough. It needs to be like, there on the screen. But yeah, more like poltergeist than hear their back. Yeah, it's... I, I was trying to think of like the movie at that point. I was like, is this are you watching Poltergeist or something? But no, there's nothing going on, on TV. It's that is nothing more than decoration. The people there are nothing more than decoration. It's like like I said, the, the beginning of the game. I loved the way I loved the beginning of that game. It was perfect. It was perfect for a completely different game. And that's the problem with it. Um, Amnesia the Dark Descent. That was just weird from the start. So with that, it's like... Um, the point in Amnesia where my immersion was broken was when I constantly had to solve all these puzzles. Now, don't get me wrong. A little bit, little bit of puzzle in a game. Like... Um, oh, which one was it? Layers of Fear... Yeah, pull out a couple of books on the bookshelf to open a locked door. That actually sounds reasonable as well. You know, you're in a you're in a large building, like mansion like building. Um it sounds to reason that, you know, secret door there, you know, might be a couple of little switches you pull out. In fact, it even fucking tells you how to do it. It just says you've got to pull out certain books and then it unlo you know, opens the door, but you've got to do them within a certain amount of time of each other. Really easy to find those books on the bookshelf. It's just like that, 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 done. Yeah, so it's not even really a puzzle. It's like opening a switch, but they're all in the same fucking place, which makes sense. Yeah, it's not like you you got to go to the kitchen and pull out a cookery book off the shelf on the kitchen, then run into the kids' room and like open the toy box and then run into the lounge and like, you know, turn the stool around three times to unlock the door to the basement, you know. Which is what they did in Outlast and in Amnesia. Yeah, it's it's like why? Why are these puzzles here? Yeah, and it's like someone might might say to me, is like, oh yeah, but that one with the uh with the sprinkler system is that like, but why were they shut off? Why have you got the two valves to the fucking sprinkler system at two completely different locations? The valves to the sprinkler system should not be connected to the fucking bath or the kitchen sink. No, they should have. They have, it should have its own completely independent valve. Yeah, the fact that I've got to go to the kitchen, turn a valve in the kitchen, then go to the go to the bathroom and change a you know flick a switch in the bathroom, then go back to the pump for the sprinkler system and hit that to be able to put out a fire, when I could have just kicked the fucking table out of the way and just walked out the building. <laughs> yeah, it's it's annoying. It's frustrating because it's like you're only doing that. To make me run past the grotesque with the big fucking knife. That's the only reason you've got these two switches at different locations. And it breaks the immersion of the game. It's no longer a horror. It's an action game. Yeah. It, a horror game, you, need, you don't want to be reminded that you're playing a game. It's, uh, you know, the more you're reminded that it's a game the less scary it is. Horror is a very delicate thing. Horror is extremely delicate. And it, it needs to be treated very well. I mean, I, had, I, mean, I had the... I, as soon as I played, finished my stream yesterday, I put up all these um, posts on Facebook and Twitter about it. Like saying, yeah, please, someone recommend some decent horror games to me. And immediately you know, people are putting Outlast, Amnesia, and like, sorry, those games are shit. They're, they're, no, I mean, they're good as games, but as games, oh, yeah, I don't see what you're on about. You know, it scared the crap out of me. It's like, it's not scary. You may have been, 
you know, you may have been subject to the jump scares. You may have been disgusted at it, but you would. It was not fear. There is no fear in them. And I really want to play a game. Yeah, you know, well, I have played a couple of games on my stream that that do induce fear. But they seem so rare. They just seem to be swamped by all these essentially Resident Evil clones. And now I don't know if it's because I've played games. I've never actually managed to play PT. I really want to. But I've played games like PT. And I don't know if it's because I've played games that are like PT that it's it's made it like so all these other ones just don't work for me. I don't know if that's the case. You know, a bit like, you know, sex is good. Sex is always good until you have sex with someone who's actually good at it. And then everyone else seems shit at it and you're not interested anymore because everyone else is shit at it. Yeah, it's a bit like that. You know, oh, yeah, these are really cool horror games until you actually play a good horror game. And then it's like, oh, OK, yeah, this is just some grotesque with a big knife. Uh, hey, musical death, Rick. Uh, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm just ranting on about horror games and how, like, I personally, what personally, what I feel is wrong with most modern horror games. In fact, just basically most horror games. And looking for input from anyone else if their experiences of uh, anything like mine, whether they see the same things I do in horror games, and you know. Whether I mean, like I said, I broke uh, right at the beginning of my stream. I broke down what makes horror into th into like the three primary colors of horror, which is fear, disgust, and shock. And pointing out that pretty much every horror game relies on shock, and or uh, um, disgust, mostly disgust actually. You know, disgust with a bit of shock. But very few of them actually use fear, which to me is like the it's the most vibrant color. Well, actually, no, the most vibrant color of fear is shock because it's easy to do a jump scare. Yeah, you know, it's is it's that easy that Tigger can go up and you know jump up on this screen and go the wonderful thing about Tiggers like that and. It uh, didn't work because it was blurry, but, you know, Tigger could just go, like, you know, immediately just pop up on the screen. Just as long as it's, like, very quick and sudden, it will immediately trigger the fight or flight response. So it's a vibrant one, but it dulls very, very quick. Disgust is long-lasting, but it doesn't work. You know, it's... But fear is what you want. You want the difficulty, as I keep saying, the difficulty in a horror game should not come because you can't get past the big grotesque with the huge knife. And it shouldn't be because, oh, these fucking puzzles. Yeah, it shouldn't be because of that. Those should not be what prevent you from progressing through the game. The bit that should progress you through, uh, prevent you from progressing through the game is that I don't want to know if I want to go in that door. Yeah. Uh, no, I've heard the same about Outlast 2. Now, Outlast 1, I was saying the beginning of it, perfect. The intro to Outlast was perfect. And then the moment you enter that building and you're hit with the disgust, um, immersion broken. You know, the fact you know, you're going into this building because you're a newspaper reporter wanting to you know, do a report on this dodgy doctor, only to find like bodies everywhere and a copper impaled and a spike. You would be immediately going back out the other way, back out the window, back in your car, back down the road to the nearest police station. Go, look, I'll hold my hands up. Yeah, I broke into this building. My intention was to go into this building and find information about about the dodgy company that's running this fucking asylum. I'll hold my hands up to that. However, the place is full of fucking bodies. There's blood everywhere and there's a copper impaled on a spike. I think you need to go and investigate that shit. You know, that would be my real life reaction. And this is the thing with horror is they need to try and feel real. You know, you can introduce like loads of weird shit to it. By all means, have a have a cult 
thing there. It's like there's plenty of weird fucking cults in the world anyway. By all means, have like, you know, fucking weird demons coming out all over the place. But slowly introduce that shit. Do it in a way that's believable. Have it so that you as a player are sucked into that world. Like, like good horrors do. They build. They build and build and build. A good horror game is like good sex. You know, you take your time. Tease them a bit. Do a bit of foreplay. Build up to it. And then bring in your jump scares and your grotesques. You know, get the fear there first. Get that apprehension there. Make it so that you don't want to go into the building. Make it so you don't want to open that door. You don't want to go down that staircase. Not because there's some big fucking grotesque with a big huge fucking knife and he's going to end the game for you. Or because the batteries on your stupid torch that runs out every two seconds are going to run out and everything down there is pitch black. Well, uh, you only need to wear protection when you're like, you know, going into some asylum that you've never been in before. Once you, you know, as long as you know that like no one else has been in that asylum and, you know, then you're fine. But yeah, this this is like the problem I had with without last uh, last night. It was relying too much on um, disgust and shock. You know, the jump scares and the gore. Yeah, it's the same with like Saw. Saw is not a horror film. It's a it's it's a grotesque film. It relies on it relies on disgust. Ugh, look at the way that they died. Oh yeah, oh they got ripped in half. Oh yeah, they that, that split their head open. Oh god, they fell into a pit full of needles. Yeah, that doesn't make you go, oh fuck, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make you go. I, I, I'm too scared to watch anymore. That makes you go, oh, God, I would not like to go out like that. You know, Final Destination, same thing. You don't watch Final Destination because it induces the, uh, you know, the fear response in you. You watch Final Destination and you go, oh, God, that was, that was fucking disgusting. Oh, look, did you see the way that their head caved in when that fucking piece of wood hit them? You know, that's what you watch Final Destination for. Yeah, you know, it's granted. Obviously, in video games and movies, you can only you've only got two elements really to rely on to induce fear. Now, if you're sat in uh, your chair there at this moment, and you just felt like you know, you know, no one else is in your house. In fact, you know that it's a fucking wall behind you, but you suddenly feel two arms touch your shoulders or a hand like stroke the back of your head, something like that. Now, would you immediately be turning around to see what it is or would you actually end up freezing or jumping out, you know, going forward out of your chair? You would not be going, oh, I wonder what that was. No, you, you'd most likely you'd be like sat there freezing going, uh, the fuck is that? Has the asylum been tested? Well, apparently the asylum in, you know, in uh, Outlast... Um, you know, hadn't been properly audited. You know, that's all the paperwork was saying in there. But no, it just got weirder and weirder and weirder, but with no explanation really as to why. I, you know, after like, what, five, how long was that stream? Four hours and 22 minutes. I still had no fucking idea what was going on. And I was getting frustrated that the battery on my uh, camcorder was running out and that whenever the battery ran out on it, everything was pitch black. Now, OK, now, bear in mind, camera on my phone is not brilliant. Two seconds. I'm going to turn the lights off behind me. And I'm going to turn my two lights off that are currently facing me. Now, I will turn off one of my monitors. And I'm going to rely on another feed that I've got going at the moment. Turn off my other monitor. And the only thing giving off light in this room at the moment is the pink light from my computer, which is not very bright at all. 
and the um you know my headphones so right at this moment you can still see if i move out the way you can still see some of the things that are back here now bear in mind that things at the front because of the way that cameras work are going to be a bit brighter at the front because of the way that the computer is picking up on it but you can still see stuff that's around about here but that is off of a very 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 dim light that is that's inside my computer now when you've got yeah like i said computer monitors it's lit up the entire freaking room the entire room is lit up by two computer monitors I, to the point where I might not even really need these lights here on myself. I mean, if I, if I if I turned all them off and just turned that on at the back there, the amount of light that that lights up in the room, I can easily get out of bed and see what I'm doing when I want to go toilet. <clears throat> but in a horror game. You know, you have computer monitors there or, or like, you know, you, you have some like little ambient light, but you can't see shit without a torch or you can't see shit without some night vision goggles on. And it's like, this is not how your eyes work. And, it, and it's, it, it's just bloody frustrating. It really is. Uh, anyway, I'm going to take a quick break a minute because I need a, I need to, I need my e-cig, which I left downstairs. Um, so I'm going to take a quick break a minute and I will be back shortly and uh, I'll carry on my rant and hopefully get some input from you guys on um, what you think makes for a good horror game. Because we've gone over what is making horror games shit, but we need to find a good horror game. We need to find those elements that, you know, that, that work. You know, we need to find a horror game that actually makes me want to stop playing the game because I'm that scared of it. Not because it's so fucking grotesque that I think I'm going to throw up. And not, like, just so full of jump scares that you either become immune to it or that I'm about to have a heart attack through the amount of jump scares. No, I just I want to be taken over by fear. Not very quick, cheap scares and, and, and gore. Anyway, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I will see you all shortly. What the fuck? God, that scared the shit out of me. It's in gallery. Chat audio. Hang on, that's our game. Thank you so much! Anna? Fuck this sign and shit! And shit. Oh. Thank you so much! Oh, so much. I... Oh, what the f You stay on the other side of that door. Necklace should be in the bedroom. Uh, the... There's a shadow there. Fucking hell. I am travelling that fast that my lays my, my shots are coming back at me. I did not close that door behind me. Oh the fuck! Yeah, meet Lizzie. I'd like a refund. Oh, holy shit, girl! Y you good? I, I, after you booted up that bird, you, you started glitching out and... Save your breath. You conned me. You knew what you were doing. You want to know what I do, though? Hmm? Now, hold up, yo. Let's all be chill for a second. Really? I don't get to fucking kill him? Time to shut her up, this rinky-dink operation. No, 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 please, Lord. Have mercy upon me, please! <coughs> oh, 
I'm sure there's a bit of a glitch there because whenever I hit his balls and they don't bleed, he just stays there and he just tries to teabag you and stuff. But then like, if you hit his balls and they do bleed, eventually he, he just like, ass drops the floor and breaks it open and you fall down. Mess me up. Oh, wait, no, I did my move and I've just messed myself up. Um, wait, did I? No, I didn't. I can go all the way around here and... Aha! You did mess yourself up, Bo. Yeah, I'm assuming you're going to move and then... Yeah, I'm going to have to go a bit slow here because I can't... Asteroid Shit! Fine, I'm gonna just go in. All right, thank you all for waiting. <clears throat> so why? Oh, goodness. that's habit pressing that button. <clears throat> I do it when I'm doing my painting streams as well. I am. I immediately press the the my left screen button as instead of the uh, webcam button. So yeah, we uh, or rather, I ranted on about things that uh, I think make modern uh, horror games bad uh, in that it just focuses too much on the shock and um, grotesque oh, I've got hair in my eye yeah, it focuses too much on like the grotesque and the shock stuff side of things you know jump scares and gore basically and not enough on the fear and um, I think actually I'm going to uh, I don't know if I still got it installed. Uh, I'll just see if I have uh, SCP-087. Um, if I haven't got it, right, I haven't got it installed, but it's so small that it will only take a couple of seconds. Uh, but this game here, uh, which is almost already installed. So I'm going to quickly... I've already played this one on stream, but um, I'm just going to go through this one to show you what I mean about how you don't need grotesque. You don't need the jump scares. Now, this does use an element of, um, of shock in it, but it's well placed and it builds to it. But this is so simple that you would, yeah. I mean, even, even graphically, it's, it's it's not the prettiest, the prettiest game. Uh, just wait for this. So I may need to turn. Uh, let me go into option. Double full screen. Right, and I think I get this good job bit because I've actually already gone managed to get through the game. Uh, I mean, well, that's the thing; it's actually really easy. The the is is it's an experience, but this shows my point. The graphics are not amazing, but the thing with this one is very much the sound. So let me turn the volume up on that a bit. So this is like essentially kind of done in the form of found footage. Now imagine this being done using the Unreal Engine. The sounds there, the footsteps. That echo, the reverb on that. And then you've got that just constant sound that's there. It makes it sound eerie. And then you got, yeah, you can see immediately in front of you, but then you've got that darkness down there, but it's not too much. You're not using a torch. This is like what the ambient light in it is meant to be. But as you go down the stairs, it's just a flight, it's just stairs. Nothing really scary about that. 
But then you, you know, you get little bits that come up there that tell you a bit about like the SCP-087 entry on the SCP Foundation. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of background there. I merely like, you know, when they made this this here, like the person who made this one, he, he could have made the stuff stay up there longer to make it easier to read. Uh, it does disappear too quick. But even like that, just a little bit of ominous blackness there. It's like it makes you a little bit apprehensive to go down. But it's not so fucking dark that you can't see what's going on in front of you. Like I said, I'm not you. There's, I do not have a torch. There you go. That's you have sound. And it makes you apprehensive. Do you want to carry on down those stairs? You can hear something down there. What what is that noise that's down there? Yeah, it makes you it you it makes it it plays in your imagination. And this is the difference between fear, uh shock, and um what is the other one I said? I keep saying about grotesque. Uh fear, shock, and disgust. So far, this has not used shock or disgust. It is only using fear. So it uses sound. And it's got you there going, oh, what is that? It's got your imagination going. And it's your imagination that makes you apprehensive to continue down. You know, so as you keep going, it builds. Builds the tension, builds the atmosphere, and builds the suspense and everything. And like I said, graphics are not fucking brilliant. It's using essentially like PlayStation 1 style graphics. Yeah. Imagine if this was done in Unreal. You know, as you're going, you know, you hear the odd sound. And it's like, was that my footstep or was that an echo or was it something else? There you go. Is that coming from above or below? Is that sound really there? Yo, know, again, makes you apprehensive about going down. Then in a minute, you'll notice some details that happen to the sides as well. Then it starts playing on the heartbeat thing. And like I said, this game is this is really good for it. It's so simple. But it's already even though I I've I've watched other people play this, I've done this myself, and even though I'm talking while doing it, it still makes me feel uneasy. Makes you apprehensive to continue down. Still 
pretty much nothing in the way of visual effects other than that little bit of flicker. All sound so far. Then you see something there. I don't know if you saw that. But even when you're looking up, it's got enough mystery from down and up. Makes you feel like you're in a void. So it keeps on slowly building. Then you have that sun. It's that. Then it's. See, that was the first jump scare. Just a crackle on the screen. But even then, the heartbeat started before the jump scare. It's relying primarily on sound. And it's not even like jump scare sounds, it's not sudden sounds, it's building. Again, the footsteps. Second jump scare coming. And notice that was one of those ones where it's there and it disappeared when you turn round. Right, and again, another thing there. Not enough to actually jump scare you, but enough to make you go, what the fuck was that? Again, little jump scare there, but something that fits. It's not just something jumping out at you. It's a bit of concrete fell down. Yeah, again, another little whisper don't actually even get to see really what it was. So simple. Whispers. See, as I said, I've I've played this many times and I still feel uneasy. Who's just walking down a flight of stairs?
God, I swear there's even sounds here that I haven't noticed. There's... I swear some of these sounds I didn't notice the first time I played it. Right, and now, to make you even more unsettled. Now the floor's different. Notice I'm still not being chased by a creature. There's no grotesque with a big fucking knife. There's no corpses over, all over the place. And I haven't had some weird thing just jump out at me. Yeah, I've had a little face appear. Which isn't really jump scary, just eerie. In fact, the buzz on the camera. Well, now this is where it really starts making me feel uneasy. That noise, that sound. Again, not really relying. No creature with a big fucking knife chasing me. Yeah, I don't have this whole feeling of if I don't go and hide in the cupboard, you know, big thing with big knife is going to kill me and I'm going to have to, like, continue from my last save point. Just, the f you know, I've got no what the fuck am I doing? What am I supposed to do? I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. If I want to continue with the game, all I've got to do is just continue down the stairs. And like I said at the beginning, imagine this being... Imagine this being done with the Unreal Engine. Still making me feel uneasy. Like I said, I've already been through this game before. And the end result of the game is you die anyway. Like you know, that's that's the end of the game. It's found footage. But that is an example of a horror done right but like I said imagine if the person who did this was a triple A developer and carried forth like that sense of dread and everything from that experience into a triple A title yo no big fucking thing with a big fucking knife yo no you know, no bits of fucking corpse and impaled bodies all over the place or, you know, shit like that. You know, it's simple and very, very, very effective because it plays on sound. It plays on emotion. It plays on imagination, which is, that is how you get fear. And this is where, like, I kind of wonder whether whether there should be different categories of horror game. Because it's like, uh, I keep on saying about horror genre and horror or horror theme. 
and horror. You know, it's like the horror genre of games are not, you know, so you've got your three categories of, of fear, shock, and disgust. And it's all relying too much on disgust and uh, and shock. I want more fear in my horror games. Yeah, um, same as I, uh, oh, was it the, the Conjuring films? Uh, I don't know if she's still in chat. Stacy like has seen most of the Conjuring movies with me. Like we went to cinema to see. Oh, what was it we went to? I can't remember whether it was The Nun. I'm sure we saw Annabelle in the cinema. And I'm sure we saw The Conjuring 2 in the cinema. I think we might have seen The Nun together in the cinema as well. But, um, yeah, that there, it built with built tension. It's the whole true story. I don't know how, where, whether it's... Because there's a few movies that I've seen where it says, oh, this is based on a true story. And reality is it's not. It's actually, you know, fictional. I don't know. But it playing on the whole true story thing as well, if you can make people believe that what their experience is something that actually happened or a reenactment of something that actually happened. Again, that doesn't build on the shock. It doesn't build on the disgust. It builds on the fear because it's like immediately it's saying, come into this environment, be immersed. Yeah. Part of the immersion of this is this actually happened to these people. So, yeah, so what makes what makes for a good horror game? Out of the games that I've played, what ones worked? Mortuary Assistant worked. I mean, that there, it puts you into the uneasy setting. Now, it, it uses disgust, granted, to get you into that uneasy setting of you working in a, in a fucking mortuary. I, I, like, I can't, I could never imagine wanting to work in that sort of environment. My hair is actually seems all over all over the place there. It's all tangled up at the front. And this is a problem with like cheap wigs. But yeah, um yeah, mortuary assistant played a little bit on the discuss because you're working on a mortuary and it used shock because there are jump scares in it. But it also worked with building tension and it wasn't like yeah bang here's a whole load of jump scares it built up to it yeah and it's like the disgust side of it well how can you not have a mortuary environment and not feel a sense of excuse me, a sense of disgust to it you of course you're working around dead bodies but it was thematically appropriate yeah the outlast is uh no what I was expecting when I played Outlast was, you know, you got all that build up there as you come up to the building. Now, I was expecting to be going into the asylum through the front door and saying, oh, I'm a reporter. I'm doing uh, doing an article about the asylum and that. And basically even meeting right at the beginning, the very person that the report is meant to be about. Uh, and basically going around in the asylum, like with it slowly building where everything seems normal. It's just a perfectly normal asylum. All the patients here are happy and doped up and it's just a, a, like any other asylum. Uh, and it's like I start going around talking to the other patients and stuff and talking to the other members of staff. And then maybe someone comes on and like, yeah, maybe you should stop digging. Stop digging because people who dig disappear. And you start getting drip fed this little bit of story. So you maybe want to go into that more. And I'm looking at my thing. I've just noticed my uh, headphones are rapidly changing colour. Which usually happens when I get a raid or a sub. But I haven't had an update. Uh, okay, that's confused me for a minute there. Um, what was I saying? But yeah, that's what I was expecting, where it slowly would build up to that. Hang on. Am I... Am I have I... Was I supposed to receive some Twitch update there that I didn't receive? Some notification. I'm not seeing one. 
because that that happened to my headphones why are you doing that now weird yeah it should be static on purple like that i should only be getting the other thing when i get like um i'm not getting any notifications there weird Very strange um anyway yeah as i was saying the i was expecting it to be that that you're going around this asylum investigating stuff and like as you're investigating you uncover more and more and more and more then the cult is revealed to you yeah as you dig in it or like yeah after a while you know you start interviewing people talking maybe about the cult and then the next thing you actually um admitted to the asylum or something like that that's what i was expecting not straight in with the impaled police officers and stuff. And I think it would have worked so much better if they'd have done it that way as well. That you've gone in there and everything seems normal. And that, you know, until you uncover that it's not, that you as you dig deeper, then you see the experiments that are being done and so on. I think it would have worked a lot better if it was done like that. But like I said, that's just my opinion. I'm interested to know what anyone else who's played it thinks. And yeah, I'm interested to know like your views on any horror games and stuff that you've played. You know, what do you think works and what do you think doesn't? Um, I mean, what other ones have I played that I thought worked really well with the ambience and stuff? Um, you know, Summer of 58. That one there it was a good bit of storytelling. It had jump scares, but the jump scares were in appropriate places and it worked really, really well with setting an atmosphere. Um, you knew exactly why you were there. You knew exactly what you were doing. There was no stupid bloody puzzles of like, mm, maybe if I change the spinning doll round in the music box, uh, then it will open up a portal to the netherworld and bullshit like that. Yeah, there were no stupid puzzles in it. There, yeah, little bit of treasure hunt, but again, a little bit of puzzle, a little bit of treasure hunt is fine. Yeah, a little bit of that's fine, but when it's purely there for no other reason than to force you to have to run past the big guy with the big knife, it's shit. Yeah, and that's why Outlast is not there in that in that list. Outlast isn't. Same, same with uh, again with uh, Amnesia: The Dark Descent. It is not up there with the with my best horror games. In fact, actually, like let's have a look at what the actual what Google says is the best horror games. Um, let me full screen that. Go over to that one, and we'll put in like best horror games. Now, most of this list, I will probably disagree with so this is games radar uh immediately straight in there with a picture from resident evil right returnal not played uh might not seem like an obvious scary game but the strong vein comic horror no it's not really semi -up. resident evil village now what i've seen of resident evil village it's playing on the same bullshit that every other horror game does I'm not seeing a horror game. I am seeing a horror theme game. Slender the Eight Pages. If it's the one I think it is, I have played that. That worked. That had atmosphere. That that worked there. Not played Fatal Frame. Uh, or Mundoon. I could have sworn actually. Or did it have just Resident Evil at the top there? I oh, know it was. Yeah, I was down here. They got Resident Evil Village, which, like I said, to me, it's just. A game that features vampires. I don't see anything horror about it. Alan Wake, very atmospheric. I haven't played it, but I have watched a play uh, someone play it, and it's very atmospheric. Yeah, it, it very much wants to build an atmosphere of that. Carrion? I can't... Cons horror theme, not horror game. Prey, not played. Little Nightmares 2... Very disturbing. Uh, I mean, I haven't played Little Nightmares 2, but I've played Little Nightmares, which is you know, very disturbing. I wouldn't consider it a horror game 
well, I don't know. It's it does work with the making you feel uneasy. It doesn't come in with any jump scares or anything, but it does make you feel uneasy. And it's in third person. So to make you feel uneasy without it being in first person is an achievement. Um, Until Dawn, I've heard a lot of people tell me that Until Dawn is good. Um, But unfortunately, that's a PlayStation exclusive. Um, I should have put on PC. Darkwood, not heard of. Bloodborne. Really? Bloodborne? Horror theme, not actual horror. And no, go away with your adverts. Devotion? Yep. Yep, that was good. I, I played that one, uh, was it last week or week before? Devo yeah, not last week, week before. Played Devotion, really enjoyed Devotion. That worked, that made me feel uneasy. Um, didn't rely on jump scares, did not rely on disgust. Uh, but it really did work with making you feel uneasy. I mean, it had a bit of disgust bits like ripping your own tongue out and gouging your own eye out, which actually the, the visual effect on the screen for that was actually really good. The way it blurred up and distorted like one side and messed it about as you... Oh, God, that bit was horrible. Resident Evil 4? No, sorry, horror theme. It's an action game. The very fact that even the photo, the image of it there is like with a gun. Yeah, it's an action game, not a horror game. It just has a, I mean, it's to have zombies and weird cult cultists in it. Amnesia Rebirth. I cannot comment on Rebirth, but if it's anything like Dark Descent, sorry, no, not a horror game. It's just horror theme. Dead Space again, horror theme. Soma. I've heard a few people recommend Soma to me, so. That's on my list uh, to, to get hold of. Outlast, I wanted, I really did. It's freaky. It's disgusting. And it's shocking. Doesn't induce fear to me. It's not a horror. Silent Hill 2, first Silent Hill, definitely made me feel uneasy. Can't comment on Silent Hill who. Silent Hill 2. In fact, the very thing that put me off Silent Hill 2 was Pyramid Head. Big guy with a big knife. That's what put me off of Silent Hill 2. When I saw when I saw that, I saw video game. I, I know it sounds weird because they're all video games, but I saw video game, if you know what I mean. I didn't see horror, I saw video game. Immediately, Pyramid Head breaks my immersion. Uh, Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. I've seen other people play it. Uh, not really a horror. It just has zombies in it. Zombies do not make a horror. It makes a zombie movie or zombie game. I mean, Believe it or not, if I go back to the Google thing with my search, I, you'll actually see Minecraft is on Google's list. Resident Evil 2 Remake, yeah, has a bit of the atmosphere with it. But again, it's more using disgust and, um, yeah, and shock. It's a zombie action game. PT. PT is most definitely up there. I have not played it. I really, 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 really want to. I've played other games like PT. I've seen excerpts from the game. And I really wish that Kojima had done it, had actually made that Silent Hill game. I really, really would have loved to have seen a finished Silent Hill game, which is what PT was leading to. I would love to have played that. PT is was genius. And it spawned a whole bunch of horror games which would, did not follow the Resident Evil recipe. Alien Isolation, really, really good. Until it wasn't. It dragged on way too much. 
and you won't see anything over there like you know so xenomorph monster boarding to cliche uh, due to over exposure making terrifying once again yeah it just goes on about how terrifying it is uh you know uh extends into a lengthy game yeah it is lengthy too fucking lengthy and that's the problem with alien isolation so alien isolation um was good until about the halfway point of the game and then it just dragged and then you realize hang on i'm going to this room to pick up a fucking key card so i can open this door while avoiding basically the big grotesque with a knife except obviously it's not a knife it's a tail and a you know but it's still basically the you know big guy with a knife big guy with big knife is basically all the xenomorph is and it's like brings me to another point with like uh with some horror games that if a horror game is too long again it breaks your immersion like a good the best horror games i've played so far are all kind of short you know they're not they're not lengthy at all they could be done in like one session yeah and i'm happy to have paid what i've paid for them yeah i did devotion in one sitting and i'm happy to have paid what i paid for that i did um myths of aden in one sitting and i'm happy to have paid that uh same with uh summer of 58 that was done in one sitting and i thoroughly enjoyed it though they were good working horror games they did exactly what i wanted them to do they made it those games made it to my list you know alien isolation if that game yeah i isolation's tense survival gameplay keeps the pulse pounding for hours and hours no i'd rather it was just hours not hours and hours the the moment the, at that point where you flush the xenomorph out the airlock that should have been it end of game end the game there that was fine do not carry on D leave it there if you want to carry on make a sequel just leave the game there end it right there yeah and it's like anyone who anyone i know who's uh, who says about like you know oh, they they want to play alien isolation it's like right now this will, might not mean anything to you but you know, the airlock bit, as soon as you get to the airlock bit, once you've done that bit, turn the game off. Turn the game off and imagine your ending. Turn the game off there. Because after that point, it then drags. You want the, you know, you're going, well, I thought that was the end of the game. And and, and after that, it's almost like the, the, the creators of the game were into edging. You know, so it's like they, they go so far. You know, they build you up. Oh, here comes the end. Ah, no, it's not really. Oh, guess what? Is, is, oh, is this the end? Is this the end? Is this the end? Nope. No, it's not the end. Oh, look, you're in you're in amongst like the, the, the xenomorph queen's layer. All oh, these eggs are bought. All oh, right, yeah, you've managed to turn on the reactor and you set the reactor off and flooded all. Is it over? Nah, it's not. No, that's how I felt with Alien Isolation to the point where I went, you know what? Fuck this. I can't be asked to play this anymore. I'd never finished it. I never finished it because it dragged. You know, for the first whole bunch of streams I did for that game, I was going on and harping on about how I really liked it. Even though I was dying a lot, I really liked it. And then it just dragged. Now, so unfortunately, because of that, it doesn't make my list. If it ended at that point where the Xenomorphs flushed out the airlock, Alien Isolation would actually make it on my list. Layers of Fear definitely definitely makes it on that list that actually kind of surprised me it's on all those formats as well i thought it was pc only but layers of fear definitely uh, that's that's on my list resident evil 7 no nah. and should i tell you something that actually pisses me off with this list is i've mentioned a couple of games already that were fucking amazing horror games and they're not even on this list at all. But you've got Resident Evil 7, you know, Resident Evil 8, um, Resident Evil 2 Remake. It's like, hang on, did you get uh, like any form of payout, payout from Capcom for that? Or 
you know, it's how can you stick like what four Resident Evil games on that list and leave out Phasmophobia and um you know Summer of 58 and Miss of Aiden? Yeah, it's it's like those games have actually been out a while. Resident Evil uh Resident Evil 8 only came out earlier this year. Miss of Aiden came out last year. I can't I don't know when Summer of 58 came out, but that's been out for some time. And they're not even on this list. Yeah, I don't agree with Game Radar's list there. Listing 25 games and you couldn't mention those two. But as I said, like up here, like given this list up here that uh Google produces. Uh, Silent Hill, Amnesia, The Dark Descent, Outlast, Dead by Daylight, which I've already said. That's a game of it. It's a game of chasing the playground, but you're all dressed as, you know, you know the person who's, who's it is dressed as a horror character. Evil Within, I can't comment on from what I've heard from people, though it can be a bit draggy. Outlast, unfortunately, I wanted to. Um... Yeah, again, you're getting like a lot of the same sort of games come up. I mean, okay, yeah, the odd one there, which may stand out a bit, like Layers of Fear. Um, Phasmophobia is on this list, at least. PT. Um, I've heard Dark Pictures is one to look at. Um... I'm sure it was on this list here, the way it came up with. Uh, I tried to do Condemned Criminal Origins. I couldn't get the game to load up. OK, it's not coming up here last time. Last time I looked at Google's list, it actually had Minecraft on it. And it's always like, well, maybe it's because it features zombies in the game. You know, Minecraft has zombies. But seriously, on this list here of games like under the horror genre, Google actually had Minecraft on there. But uh, let's have a look at see what other best horror games 2021. Right, let's let, limit it to PC because obviously, in fact, was it PC the last time where I had it come up with? There you go. Video games, horror, personal computer, Minecraft. What make the only possible reason I could think that Minecraft is in that list is purely because it has zombies in it. Which means how many more of these entries are on here because they feature zombies or uh, yeah, vampires or, or something like that. How many on this list are not horror games? They just feature a horror... Not even a horror component. Doki Doki Literature Club. Doki Doki Literature Club. Now I've never played the game, but I'm just—it's just even the title and like the the anime girls on on that. What, what the fuck is Doki Doki Literature Club? Doki Doki Literature Club is a, tw is a 2017 freeware visual novel developed by an American independent game studio. Blah, 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 blah for Microsoft Windows. The game was originally distributed through Itch.io. Uh, apparently, it's a horror game. Let's have a look at some pictures from it. Please don't have anything that, like... What about this is horror? Oh, oh, look at that. Yo, yeah, so... Has a bit of grotesqueness in it. Is is this is this what makes it horror? Is it? God, it's this is what annoys me. This this is this is what I'm on about. You know, everything. So many like things that are based on like the Resident Evil model. So much of it, and it's like. The only thing amongst this so far, out of everything on, on this list along the top here, the things that really actually stand out to me of this phasmophobia. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, that's it, I think, off of that list, really. I mean, I'm just scanning through. Phasmophobia. Oh, PT. But PT didn't come out on personal computer. It only came out on... Uh, uh, was it PS4? Was it PS4? PS3? You cannot tell that that I'm sure that did not come out on Hideo Kojima. Hang on, really? Was Hideo Kojima responsible for Flappy Bird? So I just gotta look this up now. No. Why the hell? What has Flappy Bird got to do with PT? All right, so, but yeah, PT, I'm pretty sure that came out. Yeah, PlayStation Network, PlayStation Store. It didn't come out on personal computer. Platforms, PlayStation 4. So... OK, so I have to scratch PT off of that list there. I mean, I know there is a, um, you know, many fan remakes of PT that are on PC. But. But yeah, so out of those there. I'm only really seeing. But was it the medium, I think, was actually one that I put on my list that I wanted to have a look at. So if it was the me the medium, I think, did actually look really interesting. Can't remember now. I'm sure I've got that on my wish list medium. But uh yeah, phasmophobia, in all honesty, is the only one off of that list that stands out as what I would consider true horror. I mean, obviously there's a whole bunch of them there that I can't comment on because I haven't experienced, but I will be experiencing them soon. But this is why like I I really need people's recommendations of what to go into because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting fed up with playing games that use the Resident Evil model after people have told me, oh, this game's scary as fuck. And it's like, it's another run round and solve puzzles with some big guy with a knife. You know, please give me, give me something original. Uh, anyway, I keep going into this rant and going on about that. And I, just, I need to find games that are need to find the right ones. Right. Anyway, I'm going to be back uh, shortly. I'm just going to take a quick break. Uh, I'll see you all in a minute. <laughs> and that's basically it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? <laughs> oh, no. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, that's that's brilliant. I like it. I like that one. Oh, that one's good. <sighs> okay, so far. Oh, what the f You stay on the other side of that door. Come on. Fucking finally. Oh, fuck me. That was hard.
Necklace should be in the bedroom. Uh, that... There's a shadow there. Oh, fucking hell! Fine, I'm gonna just go in there full melee. It's like, fuck you, zombies. I'm gonna, yeah, just... <laughs> Oh, yeah, Christ. fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you, yeah, fuck you too, <laughs> and you, yeah, more you, yeah, you can fuck off, and you, and <coughs> I'm sure there's a bit of a glitch there, because whenever I hit his balls, and they don't bleed. He just stays there and he just tries to teabag you and stuff. But then, like, if you hit his balls and they do bleed, eventually he he just, like, ash drops the floor and breaks it open and you fall down. Mess me up. Oh, wait, no. I did my move and I've just messed myself up. Um, wait, did I? No, I didn't. I can go all the way around here and... Aha! You did mess yourself up, Bo. Yeah, I'm assuming you're going to move and now. So it's nice to have someone here to keep me company. Hmm. You see, I just found a problem. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to follow me any further on account of that. You have no arms or legs, so I don't see how you can climb a ladder. So, um, I guess this is where we part ways. Don't look at me like that. How, how am I supposed to get you up that ladder? You've got no arms and legs. You can't follow me. I'll tell you what, I'll close the door so that you're safe. There you go. Does it look like he uses the toilet roll when... He's got two toilets like right next to each other. Does he like perch on two toilets at once? Right, like stepping you fuck. Fucking 28 grand you've had out of me just to try and sell my body some fucking scabs. Oh, you're dead. Fucking dead. What the fuck? God, that scared the shit out of me. I am travelling that fast that my lays my, my shots are coming back at me. Yeah, meet Lizzie. I'd like a refund. Oh, holy shit, girl! Y you good? I, I, after you booted up that bird, you, you started glitching out and... Save your breath. You conned me. You knew what you were doing. You want to know what I do, though? Hmm? Now, hold up, yo. Let's all be chill for a second. Really? I don't get to fucking kill him? Time to shut her up, this rinky-dink operation. No, 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 please, Lord. Have mercy upon me, please. So, as I promised, the... Uh... So, yeah, um, I've gone and pressed the wrong button there again, but it doesn't matter, I was going to go over to this screen in a second anyway. But yeah, I... Um, there is actually a kind of version of SCP... Uh, 087 that is using the Unreal Engine. So have a little look at this. Now this one here I'm not expecting anything like oh bit of volume on that. So I'm not expecting the same ambience that the that SCP-087 had 
this here is SCP Operation Descent. Um, and I'm expecting this... Well, it already said anyway on the blur, but it's based on that it's not actually SCP-087 as such. But, you know, so you have your college campus. So like this here, you actually get to start off in the door. But as you go in, again, you know, you've got a flashlight where the battery runs out very quick. And this obviously, one of the things that this is using for ambience is music. You know, but you've got a flashlight. But, you know, graphically, it's a lot clearer. As you can see, the battery running out on the torch is an element that I'm not keen on. Like, who has a torch that runs out of battery after only a few seconds? You know, so, but again, you have got a little bit of ambient light, but you can't see much without a torch. Now, I believe, yeah, it has got a crouch function and a run. So we'll run down the stairs. But this here, for setting, setting the ambience, and of course you've got uh, a, uh, basically a fitness bar that runs out incredibly quick. But again, very simple in that you're just walking down flights of stairs. Right, so my torch is not got luck. Right, so there's another torch down here. What do I pick that up with then? Oh, you just walk into it. So it's not really building the atmosphere up as well as the other one did, even though the graphics on this are so much nicer. Yeah, it, it's not... Right, so we've got now got the face there, but notice how that this has got the eyes. And it chases you and kills you. Which is not what happened in the other one. So that's making you rely on the shock and get the hell out of there. But it fails. We're out of that because that was just like a quickly show graphically what is possible. But it obviously doesn't. Where the f. Now's my mask on there. It obviously doesn't deliver in the same way as the other SCP-087 game did because um, it's trying to do too much with such a simple concept. Um, SCP-087 has you feeling uneasy about continuing because it builds up that ambience and that sense of dread so well, even though it's not Graphically that pretty. This is really annoying. I've got like one hair that keeps on getting in my eye. Yeah, it it where is my hair put my comb? Yeah, it builds up that ambience and that sense of dread so easy or so well in that uh that first SCP-087 game that I put on. Um and it's, I just can't understand like why this concept, this this horror concept of atmosphere and ambience is so forgotten. Like, um, 
I'm going to have a look on YouTube, see if I can find at least a clip from the original black and white version of The Haunting. Because it's like the I've seen both the black and white and the remake of The Haunting. And in the original version of The Haunting, uh, it didn't rely at all on um, visual special effects. It was all done with sound. I think the only visual effect it had was like at one point a rocking chair going by itself. So um, there's a trailer for it, which... Um, I don't know how loud this is going to come through. I hope it's not too loud or too quiet. Yeah. God, it knows I'm here. Look, I know the supernatural is something that isn't supposed to happen, but it does happen. Now look, Doc, we're buddies, okay? But oh, that sample, yes. Yeah, well, white zombie My name's instead. Markway, Dr. Markway, a scientist interested in the supernatural. The unnatural, if you like. I came to Hill House to find the key to another world. Assisting me in this exploration of the unknown was Eleanor, Nell, who could look back into the past, and Theo, something of a witch who could see into the future. This is Luke, who didn't believe in anything until evil, patient and waiting, made him change his mind. Stop it! God. God. Whose hand was I holding? How many of us take seriously the things we cannot or do not want to understand simply because we are afraid? Eleanor, you're now, obviously, you're acting and everything back then this wasn't house. as good as it is today. You have to watch it every minute. The but... The was produced and directed by Robert Wise, brilliant producer of West Side Story. The it was done so well because it didn't have all the special effects. Julie Harris, Claire Bloom, Richard I just wish I could show you a Campbell. scene with it where it it works so well peace. with but building the atmosphere like to it. A born bad. It's not. It doesn't rely on jump scares neither. But it was one of the it was one of the issues that I had with the remake of that was how they tried to bring about the horror through compu through computer effects and it looked shit. Yeah, not only did it not only was it like um, you know just badly done visual effects they 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 looked shit. Yeah, the, the the whole head coming out and seeing why that wasn't it didn't need that. The original was so much scarier because it, it it fed on your imagination because it used the sound. Yeah, you don't even see so another hand holding her hand there. You just see her react as if there is another hand holding her holding her hand. Yeah, but you never see at least I don't remember another another hand holding her hand in that scene in in the film. Yeah, but I do remember that the film. You no, know, it might be because it's in, you know it's in black and white that might have added to it, but it just had so many so so much ambiance to it, so much atmosphere, and it was all done through sound. Very very little, other than like people's reactions. Very very little actually done with you know visually. Yeah, you know, the whole bit with the door. No, granted, sound design wasn't as good back then as it is today. Like, we're much better at sound design today. 
you know, so much better at like, you know, getting like the surround sound effects and, you know, the, the actual more like a banging door and things like that. But even then, the the the, the pounding at that door, even the, you don't even see the door doing this. You did, the camera just shows the door and you hear, you know, to say this is where the banging's coming from because they were a lot more limited on what they could do with sound back then. But even with that, it still makes you, it, in that scene where that's going on in the film, it still makes it, it make you feel really uneasy. Yeah, and it makes it feel like it's something you can't escape from. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to come in through the door all big and hulky with a big knife. But it's there and you can't escape from it. And it's scary. That un that that sense of the unknown makes it scary. And in the is is the same thing that you get with like a lot of the conjuring films as well. It's like the conjuring films, yet yeah, they use visual effects and that and like very good makeup and stuff. But again, it's also this whole sense of the unknown. Not sense of a I have no fucking idea what's going on because the plot to this fucking thing is so damn confusing. Now, another one as well, which I thought worked incredibly well, and it actually got really heavily slammed by a lot of people, um, was uh, the Blair Witch Project. Uh, let's see if there's a trailer for the Blair Witch Project, but... Uh, yeah, the Blair Witch, uh, the Blair Witch Project. Um, you can tell me there's like a full movie on here, are you? Yeah, being yeah, people were saying, oh, it's, it's oh, go away with your stupid you adverts, uh, YouTube. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind so much if YouTube would actually let me monetize my channel. Um. But yeah, let's have a look at like the Blair Witch Project trailer. Um, it's a lot of people didn't like the found footage look to it. Like the, they didn't like the. OK, you just dodgy video. Oh, oh hang on. It was my project. It would have helped if I actually had the uh, the volume. In that. And I just want oh. to apologize. To Mike's mom and Josh's mom and my mom, I am so, so sorry. Okay, so they use blackness here to induce a sense of mystery. Because it was my project. <laughs> so they're taking a little bit of audio of the from the film. Montgomery College students continues in Frederick County tonight. Ten days and thousands of man hours have been unable to produce any clues. We have a few leads, a um, few other options we want to take advantage of and just try to put together some, uh, some pieces to this puzzle. Do you believe the occult may be involved in the disappearance of your son? Oh, so they're using so a lot of mystery in that in the trailer. You know, by showing very, very little there, they're, even in the trailer, they're managing to get a feeling of unease. The Blair Witch mythology. No, you know, no, um, no jump scares or anything, but they still, by showing like the... Um, so go away. Uh, by showing the... Uh, the scene, the bits there where they're they're showing the tapes and like the collecting of the camera, uh, they're they're making it seem more real, like drawing you in by saying this is this is true, this is this is, you know, th this is footage that was found. Um, okay, there uh, can't find a. No, there is the full movie of it, like up on YouTube by the look of it probably a whole load of fakes but um yeah the thing i liked about the blair witch project is it felt more real if you know what i mean it felt it felt like it could be true and the fact that you never see what it is that's that's got them 
yeah, it's all left like, yeah, it's left open, but you never see whether it's a killer or a monster. You never see it. You see them running away from it. You hear it off in the distance. So again, everything in that is done through sound. Now, I was saying to my mum earlier about like something like me and a friend were quite cruel to uh to my brother and one of his friends like they went out camping one night just after they watched the Blair Witch Project and uh we went up we went up like late at night to where they were camping and we started like snapping twigs and banging stones together like and, like just move around and start banging stones and snapping twigs and we kept this up for a while and then eventually we went up to snuck up to the tent and very quickly just shook the shit out, <laughs> shook the shit out of the tent. Uh, they they end up running all the way home after that. But like they, we, they literally only just watched the Blair Witch Project before going up and going camping. Uh, we thought it was hilarious. But yeah, a lot of a lot of people slammed the Blair Witch Project because they just didn't get what was going on, and it. The thing is, is it's almost like some people are looking for an action movie or something. You know, when you say like a horror movie or something, like that, they're looking for a creature feature. And I think this is the same in games. And it's why a lot of people, when I posted up on um, Facebook about it, weren't understanding why I wasn't that impressed with Outlast. Because so many people were saying Outlast is amazing. It's scary. And when I said, no, nah, it's not, it, it doesn't make it on my list. It's a failure. Uh, a lot of people just couldn't understand why I felt that way about it. And it's almost like, um, I think people kind of expect like action adventure sort of thing with any game. You know, that I, th I think this like when, uh, when you have like a game, which isn't that, like people like like just can't grasp the concept of it. Yeah, maybe maybe that's why people keep recommending these these games to me. And when they say they're scary, they're not really understanding that what I'm looking for is more than bits of body and uh, jump scares. What I'm after is fear. Like I said, phasmophobia, phasmophobia's got it. Summer of 58's got it. Devotion's got it. But yeah, there's just so many games out there that just seem to be clones of Resident Evil and they just don't. But anyway, I'm starting to keep repeating myself now. Um, I'm like thinking, do I play, do I quickly play something off of itch.io? Uh, off of the many things that I've got there. Uh, or do I go and do a raid? I mean, I'll leave that up to, you, know, up to you lot. Uh, see if anyone responds first. I mean, I've got itch.io up on my screen at the moment with a bunch of games on there. Uh, so I could play a couple of itch.io games just to carry on with the stream. Uh, I mean, there was one there that I found called Slender Tubbies. <laughs> it's uh, obviously a Teletubbies sort of game um probably shit i don't know uh it's one of the things i go on itch.io to pick up like various stuff on there like thinking oh this this could be good and annoyingly i find like the the odd thing there where graphically it looks really good but then you go into it and it's like oh really i've got to go around on a treasure hunt or like solving puzzles or whatever and it's like i don't want that in a horror game i really don't yeah i don't mind a little bit i don't mind a little bit of like uh you know uh the person you know the person you know this door's locked maybe the person's left the key in the key cabinet by the front door and then having to go to the front door get that and then back upstairs to unlock it. i don't mind that don't mind that but it's when you end up with the this like why is that like that why is that like that why do you have 
why do you have like one of the valves for the sprinkler unit at one end of the building and the other valve for it at the other end of the building? Why are the valves not right next to the sprinkler unit where they should be? You know, why are you dangling from that window and trying to climb back in the building when you should be dropping from the window and running the fuck out of there? You know, it's it, that sort of shit just winds me up. <laughs> so yeah, sod it. Let's have a let's have a look at what we got here on itch.io. So I've I've downloaded I've downloaded a lot of these before I did my Christmas stream. Um as you can see, I mean there's a couple I've added since. Um this one here was uh, I've just downloaded that one today to have a look at. And then there's Contempt, which uh looked interesting. Short horror game set in an abandoned house. It's like when I so um i saw basically someone talking about games and i think it was like content was one they kind of had in the background and it was like uh if it's what i think it is it kind of reminded me of pt like the, the if it was what i think it is so there's that uh but then it's like further down i've got a bunch of others like wayward harbor stray souls demo where yeah, you know, these here just kind of stood out as like, oh, that looks interesting. Like this one here kind of reminded me a bit of the original Silent Hill. So uh, it's not out yet. This is just the demo for it. So, um, yeah, I mean, some of these I might play. I don't know whether to play the I could play some of these now or I could play them in my usual Friday night horror stream. Because uh, I don't know how long any of these demos or games are going to be. And I don't think I actually have anything lined up for next week because my original intention was for Outlast, but I don't want to continue that one. Um, I'm just thinking... No, I think I will save these for Friday. I will save them for my Friday night stream. But that's... The, yeah, that gives you... That gives you that's what my Friday stream is going to be next week. I think that might be where my Friday night streams are going to go. It's, pr it's probably going to go down to is a bunch of scary games from itch.io because like there's just too many resident evil clones out there it's too much too much using the same recipe of big guy with a knife and go and solve a bunch of puzzles damn it i didn't realize i finished my coffee so anyway yeah gonna go and do a, sh uh, a raid so let me have a look at who is about. Uh oh, now we have to load up. Is there anyone that is playing? Oh god, I was gonna say anyone playing a horror game? And it's like the first what horror game there that comes up on the list of people that I'm following is Resident Evil and Dead by Daylight. Uh, I'm not saying Dead by Daylight's a bad game. It's not. Same with the Resident Evil games. They are not bad games. They just, for me, don't belong in the horror category. They're horror theme, not horror game. Yeah, maybe there should be. Yeah, maybe there should just be a whole new genre made up. You know, of terror games or fear-inducing games. Yeah. You know, have your horror games by all yeah have your horror games full of your vampires and zombies and grotesques and then have terror games what games that are actually designed to cause fear maybe that's what needs to be done is is a whole new genre of game and movie called terror you know ones that are not designed to shock you and you know have jump scares and not designed to make you go yeah at it but actually designed to scare you. Right. Anyway, what have we got? Um, I mean, wouldn't it be ironic if I did go into like uh, one of the uh, one of the ones playing Dead by Daylight or Resident Evil Five, and then say, actually, let's, I know. Let's have a see if anyone's doing mortuary assistant, and we can have a little. Right. Who's playing Mortuary Assistant? Uh, okay, I would, but unfortunately they're all Sp uh, speaking Spanish and Portuguese. 
oh, it wouldn't it be so much easier and nicer if everyone... Well, no, I wouldn't want everyone to speak the same language. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. But I feel bad about, you know, I want to raid people that are speaking other languages than my own, but at the same time, it's like I don't want to because I can't understand them. Right, okay, we're going to go and raid Caramel T uh, VT, uh, who are currently playing Resident Evil 5. You know, like I said, I've been slating Resident Evil games and stuff all evening. Uh, so it's kind of, I don't know, ironic or hypocritical that I'm going into raid someone who's playing a Resident Evil game. But like I said, the Resident Evil games aren't bad. I just don't... They're not what I want in a horror game. They're fun games... They're just not my type of horror game. So, is that allowing it? Yep, that's allowing me to raid. I had issues with this the other day when I went to try and raid. Anyway. Yeah, I'm going to be back on again tomorrow with not a horror game at all. Uh, it's going to be Kerbal Space Program. Very much the opposite of a horror game, very chilled, and I'm not going to carry on with the career mode in that. I'm just, I'm just going to go back to playing sandbox because I have no idea what I am doing in career mode, and I just want to blow ships up and go to the moon and stuff. So anyway, we're off to go and see Caramel VT, who is playing Resident Evil 5, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you all for watching. Bye.